keep going, goddamn it. <laughs> what are you doing? Shout out to the almighty L-D-B-C, the Lions Damn Boston community. If you didn't know, now you know. All right, all right. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man. What it do, what it do, everybody. What's going on with everyone? What's going on with you, Z? How you feel, man? What's going on with you, Jay? I see you and Zelly. I see you. Yo, 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 what's happening with you? All right. Fight World Chat. What's going on with you? And Safari Caesar is in here thus far. That's right. We got a special guest. Once again, we keeping up with the grind, baby. That's right. Ricky E245. What's going on with you, baby? I'm doing prime time again. That's right. KQ is going prime time with none other than Ronnie Shields. I'm talking about the trainer and uh, a coach slash coach of uh, all the greats, Holyfield, everybody he has done. And right now, he got none other than Kid Austin, David Morrell, Jamal Charlo. And we want to talk to him. All right. So let me send him the link. He already asked for the link already, you know, and he's not a stranger to KQKC, as y'all know. All right. So let me go ahead on and do this while y'all coming on in. And I hit the roll call. All right. Let me go ahead and copy this. Just give me one second. Okay. All right. Okay. Your name again with an R. And there you go. All right. All right. Saying. There you go. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Let's see who all in the building. We got Safari Caesars up in here. We got Fight World Chat Fine Fam up in here. My man Jay, what's going on? My man Zelly up in here. What's going on, Zelly? What's going on, Zoo Blue Lion One, baby? I'm talking about Z is up in here. Ricky E245. It's up in here. We got Ray Patterson up in here. What's going on, Ray? What's happening with you? All right. We got little Rick from the south side of Houston in the building. What's going on with you? We got Asia up in here. What's going on, my love, my grace, my queen? What's going on? We got J.A. Lee up in here. Where you been, man? I'm glad to see you, though. We got my man Brandon House up in here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. J. Lee. And that's for her. Chat. All right, that's the first and probably the last time I sing a super chat. I usually don't sing it through interviews. All right, so we got Jay Lee says, Smash, uh, salute KQKC and smash them likes. That's right, hit the like button as you come in the door. All right, I appreciate everybody and thank you all for coming in today. All right, and yes, uh, well, I told you all about it last week, but you know, I wanted to talk to him about a few things. Uh, uh, but first, we get into, uh, um, you know, a few questions like, where is Jamal Charlo? You know, things like that, you know, so, cause, you know, the Charlo's favorite fighters. Uh, but, you know, where is he? You know, and what about Dave Morrell? How's he doing? How's he feeling uh, uh, from what happened with uh, Adios? He's in a coma. He had brain surgery. I mean, what? Uh, we expecting what I hear is not looking good, but then again, ain't nobody saying nothing, so I don't know. So, you know, that was what four days ago, five days ago. So, you know, I'm just curious. You know, I guess you can say I'm just not fishing, but I'm just trying to know a few things of what's going on, you know. So, Ronnie, you know, hopefully, you know, he would like to get into it. Now, keep in mind that he's not a promoter, he is a trainer. So by him working with Jamal Charlo, who is with PBC, Kid Austin, with Golden Boy, you know, uh, uh, so trainers don't really get into, you know, the specific, you know, specifics of that. 
No, that's somebody else in the party. What's up, JD? What's going on, Five? What's happening with your G5 Gabe? What's going on? The winning team is in the building. Salute to you, baby. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. The best in the business. You damn right, G. He been around. He been around for a long time. Yes, he has. And he's still kicking, baby. Because every time I look up in that ring, he's in there with a new fighter. And we're going to talk about a couple new fighters, too, that he has. A new prospect. Okay, he has a new prospect that I want to talk about uh, tonight. All right? So, and, 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 you know, get a little detail on him, you know. So, uh, uh, Miss Jay Lee said, miss you too, OG. Full interior house, rebuild all spring, summer, fall. Working every day, every hour. Gave up a second job just to complete. Hey, I heard that, baby. That's what you're supposed to do. Do your thing. Do your thing like a chicken wing. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Yeah, so. Uh, uh, yeah, do your thing. Yeah, yeah, Ron, yeah. Ronnie Shields, uh, Keg, yeah, he's a legend, man. You know, he 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 has worked with the best of them. You know, I mean, everybody out there, he touched a little bit. I mean, even two training camps or or or, or more. He never did one training camp and buy. No, he never done that. You know, he always touched them a little bit. You know, uh, uh, uh Tyson, Holyfield. I mean, you name it, he did it. You know, so, and, and, you know, I never asked his age. Uh, uh, um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, he trained Mike Tyson yeah, for a, a fight, you know. So, I mean, you know, so, you know, he's he's the best in the business. And, and you're going to learn a few things from Ronnie Shields. He, you know, he, you know, he's, and that's why I'm doing it now at night because he had like what they call rotating schedules, uh, rotating schedules where like during the day he can't do it because Jamal coming in. Then the next three hours, uh, um, uh, what you call coming in, uh, Kid Austin. Then the next time, I think he said, then uh, Morel comes in, then uh, Havoc comes in, then and I don't know. So, but it depends on who has a fight first. So, you know, who's coming up first? He's, you know, spend more time. Well, you know what? We're getting into that. All right. But anyway, what's going on, Skywalker Boxing? What's going on? That's winning team. He said, I got a link to your uh your interview on my live. Good job on the interviews. Man, appreciate your hey, appreciate you, man. And yes, sir. I appreciate you. All right. Yes, sir. I appreciate you. And, and, and Rachel Denier. All right. She was in here the other day, too. All right. So I appreciate her. You know, so she's she she's good people. And um I saw the clip of the convention uh, um, uh, where top rank was trying to pull a fast one. <laughs> he they would try to get uh, uh, um, Maloney elevated, a two champion. <laughs> Nonito was like, wait a minute, hold up, wait a minute, you know. And Richard Schaefer spoke for Nonito. You know, he spoke up for him, you know, and rightfully so, you know. So, uh, uh, so, uh, so I'm just getting around in a minute. Because I just, he just texted me. Um, he said he's waiting on a link. And I said, well, can you give me a few minutes? <laughs> you know, so I told you all 7 o'clock. So I um, I jumped on a little early. I know, a little early. So I didn't give you all, um, I told you, well, it's 7 now. So, so but anyway, um, yeah. Um, but, yeah, he's trying to pull a fast one. And. You know, Mr. Schaefer said, no, no, no. I figured somebody would try to pull something like that. And, you know, that's how it went. So, but anyway, uh, while we're waiting on Ronnie, you know, um, I'll send it to him one more time. He should be coming in any minute now since he, he should be right there in his office. Hold on, I'll send it again. Because it won't be, this won't be a two-hour stream since I came on today. But I just need to, it's, I had to, okay, copy it. And do it again. Okay. Okay. There we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. There we go. Don't worry, he he get it. What's going on? Everything boxing. What's happening with you, baby? How you feel? All right, you all right, man? 
All right. Okay, I sent it. Okay. All right, all right. So, but anyway, uh, like I was saying, uh, um, uh, we can go ahead and talk about Tulani coming here. Uh, today, for those that weren't here, okay, well, he's here now. <laughs> okay. All right. What's going on, Mr. Jill? How you doing? I'm doing great, man. How are you? I'm doing fine. You know, uh, 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 um, I really appreciate you when I text you. You always get back to me, you know, and, you know, thank you. And when I wish you luck on the fight, you know, you always get back to me. And I appreciate that. I really do. Cause no person, yeah. You know, personally, your statue, you know, who have been around for a while, you know, uh, a good thing, you know, it is it, it, a pleasure to you know pretty much um, to get to know you. Now, um, first of all, I wanted to ask you, uh, and I'm not going to, I know you're busy. I'm not going to hold you along. But I was trying to find out, we were trying to find out to chat and me, you know, uh, what is next for Jamal Charlo? Uh, uh, is he going to um, maybe fight in 2023 20, coming up? Or do you have your eyes set on someone? No, right now, no, he's he's off right now. You know, okay. he's, uh, you know, he's just off right now. So it'll probably, probably be, it'll be next year, definitely sometime. We don't okay. have exact date or anything right now okay okay because um you know you you seen the um the um 168 pounders you know i'm thinking of mcgear um a lot of other fighters down there but jamal is still the champion at 168 so uh so he still have that so but now this is the thing about um we you know go to this guy here kid austin yeah okay yeah i i did an interview with him um, him and his dad, and yeah. his dad, yeah, good people, good people, young guy, you know, great lightweight. How do you see him uh, measuring up to the lightweights out there right now? I mean, like the Devin Haney's, uh, Javante Davis's, you know, how do you see his quickness, his power? Yeah, I mean, look, this, this kid, you know, he, he's a remarkable fighter. This kid can really go, you know, he, he don't have the experience yet that those guys have, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's not going to take him very long before he's, his name is mentioned with, with all of those guys. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Uh, um, cause, cause see, it seems like, you know, he's been around, he sparred with a lot of, um, the guys that's at the top level. And right. it, it seems like he, you know, he's coming along quick, very quick. And, um, you know, you got this guy Pitbull Cruz out there who, just one fight elevated up stardom, not as yeah. far as, uh, you know, and sometimes that do put you up there. Now, do you see him climbing that ladder fast or do you see him uh, pretty much have to go through the the powers that be? Well, it's you know, it's, it's, not, it's not my decision being a trainer, mm -hmm. but it's up to, it's his promoter who is Golden Boy Promotions, mm -hmm. his manager, his father, and uh, his lawyer, Mike Camilla. So, you know, it's definitely up to those guys. All they do is give me a name, I watch, I make the game plan, and I do my uh, part. Uh, okay, so how, how many fights you got, Ronnie, uh, right now uh, that you act actively work with? Right now, we got about, we actually got about, about 10, about 10 fighters right now. Okay, okay. Because what I hear, um, uh, the you got a new prospect. Um, the new guy, uh, let me see, what's his name? Um, uh, uh, man, let me see. Kozoris, is I'm saying that name right? Caracas? Oh, yeah. yeah. He's a new prospect. Andres. 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 Andres yes. Kaskaratis. Yeah, tell me about him. Yeah, he's he's from Greece. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, uh, he's a young kid, too. You know, he's, he's in his early 20s. But yeah, uh, we we've had two fights together so far, and okay. you know, and he's uh, he's a really good fighter, and mm -hmm. you know, we're just trying to keep him busy right now. We got we got two fights together right now, and you know, and he this kid is gonna move. He's gonna move good. He's a, he's 154 pounds, so whoa, oh, he, is he? Okay, yeah, oh yeah, you know, he's he's fought with Jamal before. He's fought with Jamel also. 
Mm-hmm. So, you know, so, so this kid, you know, he's expecting some really good things out of him. He's a hard worker and, you know, and pretty soon you'll be hearing about him. Okay, okay. Yeah, at 154 too. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot. Of, yeah, 154 is getting really, really serious now. Yes, you know, it is. yeah, it's getting real serious, and Jamil gonna have his hands full. I don't know his plans or nothing like that, but you know, the next step is up there with his brother. You know, so I don't know what he's gonna do uh, or what Jamal gonna do. You know, right. but you know, but it is getting deep down there. We're talking about Fondura, you know, guys like that. You know, yeah. so well, and yeah. Laura, yeah, you know, so, but um, but still, in all, um, I want to talk about uh, um. But two weeks ago, David Morrell fight. Yeah. Okay. David Morrell came out. He looked very good, <clears throat> sharp, uh, uh, um, ready to go. And he's ready to take on everybody at that weight, he says. Yeah. Uh, he's ready to take on all the top guys. And, yeah. and, 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 and in that fight, it was a very, very n- knocked out punch that he gave. I call him adios. And, yeah. um, the young man out here is in a coma now, you know. Well, and, he, he's in a medically induced, induced coma. coma, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's better. Mm-hmm. I guess it's you know, I mean, being in a coma is being in a coma, but I guess right. it's better to be in a medically induced coma than just being in a coma by yourself. Yeah, yeah. Because medical induced coma, they put you in there for to make everything stabilize. Well, I think. Yeah, yeah. Because he had a brain bleed and mm-hmm. brain swelling. So mm-hmm. that's why they medically induced this to put him in a coma. Okay. You th- you think you think they should have stopped that fight a little earlier? Because I think the well, nose they should have stopped the fight after the eighth round. I feel they should have stopped it. You know, mm-hmm. um David, I thought in my mind, David had won every round. Uh and I just didn't see the kid doing anything that could hurt David, you mm-hmm. know, and you know, when you're in a situation like that, and I think a lot of us trainers have been in that situation when we see, uh, we know our guys way behind, but, mm. you know, you, you can't lie to these fighters. And his corner lied to him after the 10th round. If you go back and look at the 10th round, mm. after he went to the corner, they told him two more rounds, you will be world champion, <laughs> you know? And wow. that's, that's a false hope that they was giving him you know, and, you know, look, fighters are going to be fighters. Of course he's going to get in there. He's going to continue to throw punches. That's the way he trained. He he trained that way. He worked out that way. Mm-hmm. But he just took so much punishment. You know, he got his nose broke, I think, like in the second or third round. I told I told everybody it was broke, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. They, they couldn't stop the, the bleeding. You know, he was swallowing his blood. You know, I mean, everything. You know, when, when the guy stopped blinking the way this kid was blinking that lets you know he's in trouble and the corner whether they caught that or just didn't know what it was you know that means he's in trouble when when the guy started blinking the way this guy was blinking and they sent him back out there and being a fighter he's going to throw punches that's what he's going to do so right and look tony weeks is probably one of the best referees i've seen yes. in a long time Mm-hmm. But he missed it too. You know, he dropped the ball on this one also. Because mm-hmm. just because the corner don't step up and stop it, he could have stopped it. Twice I wanted to jump up and tell Tony, please, Tony, end this, you know. But mm-hmm. you know, but being in the other corner, it's not my play. Right, it right's not your play, right. You know? I was about to say that. And, right. But also not one doctor. You have three or four doctors at ringside. Not one of them stepped up. Not one commissioner stepped up, you know, to say anything. You know, it's like nobody cared about this this kid. And, mm-hmm. you know, if his own corner don't care, and how do you expect for the, the referee, the doctor, or anybody else to care about what's, what's going on in that corner, you know? I mean, it was it was it was sad, man. It was yes, you know, it was. It was sad, but you know, being on the other side, you know, I just got to look after my guy, you know, and mm. I gotta, I gotta, 
I, you know, I can't tell my guy, look, just take it easy on this kid. Mm. You know, that's not that's not my job to do. You know, mm. our job is to, you know, is to go out and win the fight. This right. guy was trying to hurt David too, so you know, I can't tell him well, since he's trying to hurt you, don't hurt him no more. Right, right. Of I course. can't tell my guy right. nothing like that, you know. But you know, um I'm surprised the doctors didn't catch that because they sit know, right there. They sit and they right there. Seen that. At yeah. any moment they could have stepped up and did they got a call time because they allowed to do that, to mm -hmm. call time and say, let me check on this guy, you know, give him his minute rest, but then call time on the bell ring. They can do that. Right, and, you right. know, evaluate the guy, see if he's okay. Wow. If he's not okay, then you stop it then. But, you know, his corner, you know, look, the mm -hmm. corner's supposed to know the fighter better than anybody. Maybe yeah. he's been in a situation where he came back and he won. Maybe that's false hope that, you know, that they was getting. I mean, it could be anything, but, you know, man, you know, I just pray that, you know, the kid comes out of this okay and, and be able to go home to his family. You know, I think that's the most important thing. But right, right after the fight, hmm. you know, uh, I saw the kid walk to the dressing room. He actually walked to the dressing room. Okay. And people were shaking his hand as he walked into the dressing room. And then we had a press conference for us. And I said, this kid will never fight again. I said, he took too many hard shots. And I said, you know, I don't, I don't think this kid will ever fight again. And then about an hour later, we heard he was in a medically induced coma. Wow. Wow. You know, see, things like that happen you know, sometimes on the plot, see, that's one thing, weird thing about boxing. Um, you can be okay today, and next year or next week, it can hit you like that, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, and we all know the brain is not meant to be hit. No. But, but we there, you know, and we sports fans, we boxing fans, and we like the entertainment, you know, yeah. but that's why it's you no know, it's a rule no hitting behind the head you know they give you warnings but then they finally yeah. make you take a point but, that's it but it is not it's not just behind the head that that causes mm -hmm. it you know it, it you know just getting hit flush with, with punches cause yeah. cause your brain brain to shiver you know i mean your brain moves you know mm -hmm. your brain moves so when you get hit whether you get hit here or you get hit here it doesn't make a difference. You rattle your brain. You know, even when you're taking straight punches, you know, your brain get rattled. Mm. You know, so and in the in the in the last round, when David came out and hit him with a straight left hand and dropped him, that should have been the end of it right there. Mm. You know, Tony should have just said, Look, man, you know, you way behind. I'm not gonna let you continue to take punches. But mm. you know, again, he probably felt hey, it's the twelfth round. The kid may want to try to finish the fight. You know, mm. I mean, look, his tone is a human being just like us all. Right. We all make mistakes, you know, but, you know, but this could be a deadly mistake. And, yeah. You know, and, you know, and I, I've talked to a lot of people since this, man. They say, you know, yeah, you know, the referee should have stopped it. The doctor should have stopped it. But most important, the corner. You know, when, when exactly. you're in the corner, you know, mm -hmm. you, look, as brave as your guy is, you have to save them from themselves sometimes. Sometimes guys just have bad nights and, you know, they look to the corner for help. You know, mm -hmm. if you ask a fighter, are you okay? He's going to say yes. He's not going to say no, mm -hmm. you know, because he's a fighter. Right. You know, right. he don't want to quit. But you, you know, but you have to at some point say, you know what, this is... You've had, you know, I think you've had enough. I've done that to countless of fighters. That's actually has gotten mad at me, mm. you know, and I've left because I stopped the fight. Wow. But I don't mm. do it for my own good. It's for their own good. That's right. Mm -hmm. And, right. you know, if you trust me to be your trainer, then you got to trust me that I'm going to save your life. I'm not going to let you get injured out there when I figure you don't have a chance to win. That's just mm -hmm. simple as that. 
If you're taking too many shots, then I'm going to explain that to you and let you know. But I tell my guys in the gym all the time, if I ever see something that I don't like, I'm stopping it. I'm about to ask you that. Okay. Go. And look, they could leave. They could do whatever they want to do. But, mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, and, you know, the crazy thing about it is what we don't know is <clears throat> how beat up did this kid get in training? You you know, some guys Sparring, yeah. way too much. You know, they get hit way too much. Even with, with a headgear, still your brain can rattle in the headgear. It doesn't make a difference. But the mm -hmm. headgear is some protection. But mm -hmm. still, if you get beat up in the gym and then you come to a fight and I just add it to what the punches that you've already taken, because, you know, like I said, we don't, I don't know what this guy has done in the gym. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Could have been he didn't get hit at all. But mm -hmm. at, at some point, still, you know, we're, we're still human beings. And, exactly. You know, and, and we have to, you know, we all want to win, you know. That's the crazy thing about it. Is, yeah. You know, we yeah. all have this perception that you win at all costs. No, it's not. It's no. not that, you know, this is a sport. Right. right. This is not a life or death uh, thing where you have to do this or you have to do that. You know, I think, yeah. you know, we get in too much of you have to win, you have to win, you know, even if it costs you your life. You know, boxers always say, I'm going to go out on my shield. No. You know, right. I go back and I look at, my good friend Mark Breland, when he stopped the fight with Deontay Wilder against mm -hmm. Tyson Fury, mm -hmm. I thought it was the best stoppages in the sport. Mm -hmm. Best stoppage in the sport at that time. I thought it was the best stoppage. You mm -hmm. know? And Mark got fired behind it because yeah. Deontay, mm -hmm. I want right. to go out on my shield. Yeah, your shield, you could have been fucking dead. You yeah. Know? And they ought to be kissing Mark Breland's ass right now mm -hmm. and, and thanking him for saving his life. But mm -hmm. instead, they do the opposite and they fire him, you know? Right. And I think right. they're pieces of shit for doing that. Wow. Man. Yeah, because, you know, he did take a lot of punch with that Fury fight, you know? And uh, Deontay Wilder believes that, um, that you know, in the, I think he said he had a rule that said, no, don't stop the fight no matter what, no matter what trouble I'm in, as long as I'm boxing, you know? So I think he had a rule about that, but you know, you got to say, well, you know, look, rules are made to be broken. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. At some right. point, you know, you got to have a heart, mm -hmm. you know? Right. And, you know, this mm -hmm. is about uh, being a human being. You know, you can lose a fight. Okay, that's fine. And you live to fight another day. Exactly. You live to fight another day. And he mm -hmm. should thank Mark Miller for that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, and, and you and you speaking of we are human. And we all, you know, uh, fight and we live another day. How is David uh, um, taking this or feel about um, what happened to his opponent and um, what's going on with him? Is it phasing him uh, any type of way? Or Right now, you know, he he's concerned. You know, he tried mm -hmm. to go to the hospital, but they wouldn't let him, you know, because he wasn't family. They wouldn't let him go, mm -hmm. go up there to see him or anything. But. You know, he said, hey, man, I just got them just saying my prayers and hopefully the guy be okay. You know, but the thing about it is we don't know right now how is it going to affect David. You know, we, we right. don't know. You know, because still, until this guy goes home, you know, mm -hmm. you know, then and be, you know, and if he's okay, then I'm sure it's not going to do anything to David. But if something happens to this kid, then of course it's going to affect him mentally, mentally you know, yeah. but still, you know, David, David knows that this is a sport. Things happen in sports and, you know, you we take the good with the bad, you know, mm -hmm. and he can't let, if he's going to continue in his career, he can't let anything stop him from doing what he has to have to do as far as yeah. training, you know, training hard the way he does, fighting hard the way he does. You know, mm -hmm. he, he can't let that affect him. You know, it just it's yeah. part of the sport. And, you know, it's not him being, you know, unhuman. No, he's a human being. And, but at the same time, you know, mm -hmm. he have to know that, hey, 
I understand, but you know, this is my career that, you know, this is where I make my living. And exactly. I take my care of my family. So this is what I have to do. Mm. Nobody, nobody goes in there to kill somebody or to hurt right. somebody to the point to where they can't ever do this again. You know, boxing is not like that. You know, of course mm. there's a sport where, you know, you talk shit to each other, you know, mm. you, you know, you, you, you build up the fight, you know, and all that you do that. Okay. That's fine. But mm. nobody, nobody seriously goes in there to try to kill somebody. Yeah. 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 I know no one intentionally want to hurt no one bad like that to, you know, put them out, you know, you know, um, for life, you know, but, but, you know, uh, now David, Boston good, look good. Uh, um, last two outings, you know, and now he wants everybody. He wants David Benavides. He wants whoever in his weight class on the top. Now he doesn't have a long record. You think he's ready? Do you think he's ready for the best? Well, look, I, th I think the last fight showed you showed everybody that he was ready. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he's he's only eight and zero, right? But you know, in his in his third fight, he, he won the regular uh, WBA belt. Mm -hmm. You know, it, you know, uh, so he's definitely right behind Canelo. So, mm -hmm. and that's the fight he wants. He wants to fight Canelo. He wants the full championship. He don't want to be a regular champion. He wants to be the world champion. Super, you know? yeah. And okay. you know, but look. You know, the, the kid, he, you know, he has a lot of skills and, mm. you know, and he wants to be the best. So, and again, you know, it, you know, uh, the winner of Caleb Plant and, and Benavides, mm. uh, the WBC say they're going to make them the mandatory for, for Canelo. So right. mm -hmm. whether Canelo fights one of those guys or not, we don't know. He already beat Caleb Plant. So if Caleb Plant wins, more than likely uh, Canelo won't turn around and fight him again. Mm -hmm. You know? So I don't know, man. Um, I interviewed you know, David. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, everything is up in the air right now. So, you know, until we figure out the X's and O's, you know, you know, David just wants to stay busy and he, he just wants to continue to fight. Mm, okay. Okay. Well, at least he wants to stay busy and continue to fight. Yeah. Uh, I had um I had interviewed David Benavides, and um, he's excited about his fight with Callum Plant because cool. he wants to fight Canelo Alvarez, and, and, and if, you know, if he beats Callum Plant, and but um, Jose Senior doesn't believe that Canelo's going to fight him, do because he don't want to fight any Mexican fighters. So uh, David Morrell might have a chance. And getting in the ring with Canelo Alvarez since he's he's from the Cuban descent, he's not he's not Mexican, so yeah. you know so that's what David's worried about. David um, Benavides is worried about that he's not going to fight him. I mean, Senior Jose Senior is worried about that he's not going to fight him. You know, well, it, well here's the thing: they better worry about Caleb Plant first, mm -hmm. you know, and then they could they do any worries after you know if, if they won that fight. Uh huh. Yeah. You know, <laughs> they excited. They excited. They got the. Uh, <laughs> they got it written on the wall already, man. They excited. That's a pay yeah. per view. You know what? So many people write things on the wall first, uh, and, we, and we and regret it later. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But uh -huh. at the same time, look, my guy's young. Also, my guy's mm. twenty four years old with eight wow. fights. Mm. You know. So, you know, depending on how long he be able to hold. 168 we don't know how how long that's going to be maybe mm -hmm. hopefully not a year but if not then my guy's going to move up to 75 you know he's yeah. not going to sit there and wait on canelo Alvarez. and canelo wants to fight he's there he's there but mm -hmm. if he doesn't then you know we're going to move on we're not going to sit back and wait on canelo Alvarez. well, you, well you at least you're the, the first problem. to see that <laughs> yeah but that's the problem in the sport right now Mm. These guys don't want to do their mandatories. They want to fight who they want to fight. And mm. look, Canelo makes a lot of money. So, so what the boxing organization is going to say? Oh no, we don't want none of your money. Uh, 
you know, they let him do what, what he want to do. And that's mm-hmm. not right to all the other guys in the sport who want to do what they want to do. But then they tell them, no, you got to do this mandatory. Canelo, yeah. you know, you know, he, he did one mandatory two years ago. But now he mm-hmm. wants to jump up to all these different weight classes and then right. back down and then do this. Then down. You know, he still want to fight Bavol again. And, you know, he shouldn't be allowed to do that because right. he could have a mandatory. He, he got mandatory waiting on, in line right now. And still, you know, they let him do whatever he want to do because of the money that he makes and because right. of what they are going to benefit from. So, there you go. Yeah, there you go, Ronnie. Because he make a lot of money and the sanctioned body fees and, you know, they allow him to do that, you know. Yeah, and, absolutely. You know, yeah, and he jump up weight class to weight class. Now I think he's going to be out to uh, August because uh, of hand well, injury, something like that. He said May. He said May. Oh, May? Okay. He said May. He said he's going to be back in May, so we'll see. Okay. Okay, well, we'll see. Well, we'll see how it um, play out. But, but you know, I hear you got a heavyweight named Havoc. Uh, and I and I, I, I hear he's starting to come along now. Uh, uh, you got any good plans for him? Uh-huh. Uh-oh. You know, I'm probably not saying his name right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, your heavyweight you got. All right? Uh-oh. Which heavyweight? Uh-huh. Uh, okay. Um, ha- ha- I'm you know what? I might not be saying I, it right. I, I got Philip Hokovic. Yeah. Okay. Hokovic. There we go. Yeah. Philip Hokovic. Yeah. with an H. Yeah. It's spelled yeah, with an H. H. You're right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Philip okay. Philip Hokovic. Yeah. I can never yeah, say you know, name look, right. He's yeah. the number one contender. Mm-hmm. He's the number one contender for U6 title for the IBF. Mm. You know, because, you know, he won his last fight. It was the last five, two, his last title eliminator. Mm. And the IBF, yet today, yeah, today the IBF, no, yesterday. Well, the last couple of days, the IBF came out and ordered that fight, saying mm-hmm. that, you know, that his next fight has to be against Philip Herkovic. So, okay. So, so, Philip, you know, I spoke to him last week before mm-hmm. this was announced, but he was really excited that he was going to get ready to fight again anyway. Mm-hmm. And, so, but the IBF now just came came out with this. So we're going to see what's going to happen because I know that uh, Usyk wants to unify right. you know, against Tyson Fury, but he wants to take a fight first. And then uh, Usyk didn't want to fight no more this year. So, so the IBF inter- intervened and say he must fight Philip Herkovic before he he fight Tyson Fury. So, so we're looking. Mm-hmm forward to that. We're excited. But we feel Philip can win and upset all of the plans that these guys are making. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it seems like everybody got their next four or five fights all laid out. Yeah. The belt, yeah, everything laid out. Now, Ron, now, Ronnie, now, how would you say the women side of boxing is doing this year? I mean... Well, you know what, man? It, it's been some really good fights this year and it's been mm-hmm. really competitive. So, no, I mean, a lot of the A-side fighters are losing, mm-hmm. you know, because, look, you know, when you underestimate, you know, it, it should never be an A-side and a B-side, mm-hmm. number one. Okay. Because, you know, I mean, it just to me, it just don't make sense. You know, okay. you call a guy an A-side, you call the other guy a B-side, you know. But, you know, it's, to me, you know, there's so many even fights out there now mm-hmm. that, you know, I mean, somebody got to get in the ring before the before the other one. So right, right. So right. I mean, unless you're a champion, then I could see you calling some, you know, a guy an A side and a B side because mm-hmm. the champion, of course, he is the A side. But when you just have regular fights, hey, just let them go in the ring together, and somebody got to be called first, though. So right, you right. Know, it, it you know, it really doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to be an A side or a B side, because right, it doesn't, right. you know, because it, you, you know, the competition is competition, right? Because we had we had a big letdown this year. Uh, we were expecting a big fight in the welterweight division, and that fell through. 
you know, if you want to say that fell through, if you <laughs> that what you want to call it. <laughs> that's what you want to call it. Right. That's what you want to call it. It <laughs> fell through. And of course, one went to another um another company and he's gonna be fighting on December 10th. And um, um so that that so now we know on uh well uh, the other fight have been mandated uh to fight by the WBC at, uh, yeah. at the convention to um fight um is mandatory, which he right. has three of them, you know. So, yeah. um, so I guess um, the WBC is up first, you yeah. know. And you got to fight his mandatory first with the WBC. I guess Keith Thurman, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess Keith Thurman. You yes. know. So uh, I don't know how that's going to go. But let me ask you this, Ronnie: Have you ever thought about training a woman, uh, um, fighter? I've I've trained women fighters before. In a oh yeah. Okay. You, oh. Okay. You ever heard of Ann Wolf? Oh yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay, no, okay. I've I didn't know that. Work before, and uh -huh. I trained some other girl fighters before, mm. but you know, uh, you know, I, women boxers are different, you know? mm -hmm. and it shouldn't be. But but you know, but it, it's a it's, it's a male dominated sport. But right. I'm glad to see right now though that the women are getting their just due. Yes, you know? they're getting mm -hmm. televised a lot. You know, and you know, and I think it's great. You know, I think it's great for boxing that mm -hmm. that the women, you know, they get the they, they they get the recognition because look, women train just as hard as the men. So yeah. why shouldn't they get that recognition? They deserve it. Yeah, yeah, that's why I say um, they do. They want twelve rounds. They want three minute rounds. You know, and if they want it, they should have it. You know, uh, I think Estrada. I think she fought three minute rounds. Um, this past weekend so and but now um uh, just gonna move into um the last weekend fight uh with um montana love i don't know did you catch that fight or not well i, I had a fight on saturday night also oh, so did i didn't, you? I didn't mm -hmm. get to see it but Man. you know mm -hmm. i did see some highlights of it okay of, of the incident that happened Okay, okay. And yeah, and then he lost his belt um due to the um disqualification. Um yeah. so but um you know when you when you when you get a cut or get an attitude, you know, I, I think you know it shouldn't go that far, you right. know, um because like I say it's still a sport and you can't get that mad because your skill set got pretty much uh, um got out box, put it that way. And right. uh, you know, you at home. And you know your hometown crowd is out there, and then you can't you can't lose your head. You gotta keep you cool. No, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, but but like I say, you know, um, I wish Jamal was fighting. Um, soon I had a fight lined up. Uh, um, I know I haven't seen him or heard from him in a while, and um, you know, I was wondering about it. People asked me about it. I haven't seen him, and Jamel. Hopefully, he has something going on. Uh, yeah, he's I know fighting with he Jamel. Tim Zhu, right? Tim Zhu, right. mm. either January or February. I'm not sure the date. Okay, yeah, he's just mandatory. Uh, yes. uh, right. So, so I wish him luck on that. So, so I think Derrick James doing a fine job over there too. Uh, so, well, both of you all doing a great jobs over there. So, but um, but now, uh, uh, where's the sport going now in this, in um, in boxing? Are we gonna get better fights in 2023? 20, you think or? Uh, well, you know, I still... think this past year we had some really good fights this mm -hmm. past year. But yeah, absolutely. I think it's gonna get better. But you know, the thing about it is we have to, you know, we are getting too many YouTubers that's trying to be fighters. You know, they 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 yeah. actually take they taken away from the sport. Exactly. We don't see it. You know, look, as much as I love Floyd Mayweather, mm -hmm. you know, he, he he's doing things that's killing the sport. You know, mm -hmm. you know, fighting he's fighting YouTubers, you right. know, and you know, and that's what boxing that's not boxing, what they are doing. That's right. People so you from the old school, Ronnie, so you know yeah, that's people not associating that mm -hmm. with boxing now. Mm -hmm. You know, they 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 hurting it because you know the, the real guys that's that's fighting on pay per view aren't doing very well. With mm -hmm. the numbers, because people have already spent money watching other things, 
mm. that's not boxing. So, you know, so I don't know, you know. Um, mm. Boxing has been good to so many people. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, and it continues to be good to people. But, you know, people that take advantage of that and the mm. real fighters are paying for it. Yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of people try to convince me and tell me that Jake Paul, you know, he's bringing attention to boxing. And no, no, he's not bringing attention. He's making a mockery out of it, in my opinion. That's exactly right. Right. And and now it's starting to be about money for for Jake Paul and the YouTubers. And they don't. It's all about money for them. Right. You know, that's what it is. I mean, look, they have such a big following outside of boxing, but, Mm -hmm. you know, and people are thinking that it's bringing money into boxing. No, it's not bringing money into boxing, Mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, I think, I think it's hurting, it's hurting the real fighters is what it's doing. Exactly. Exactly. Because they need to take the sport a little more seriously and. You know, I, I, like Floyd Mayweather, you know, I saw highlights of the fight he had Sunday. And yeah. that was the shame how he was just playing with the guy, you know. And again, I mean, it just was funny. I mean, yeah. he just was in the corner, you know, <laughs> warming up in the corner yeah. during the fight. And I mean, just, you know, man. Yes, sir. But uh, what's going on, Mr. Nana? Yes, sir. He said, did he say if Jamal was fighting soon and who? I just got here. Shout out to Coach Ronnie. All right, what's up, Kello Nater? No, uh, Jamal is not fighting right now. He was saying that Jamel got Tim Zhu coming up. All right, he got Tim Zhu coming up. Jamal, yeah. Jamal, Jamal might fight in twenty twenty three. Yeah. All right. So yeah, everybody, because you know, I'm a Jamal and Ch- Charlo and Jamel fan, big big time. You know, so I can't wait to get for him to get back in the ring. But like I said, you know, he can't force a fighter to fight. Till they ready, no. yeah. So they ready. So, cause you don't want to force a fight in there until they ready. Now, let me ask you, right? Do you know anything about BLK Prime? Cause I never heard of it. I never know? heard of him either. Okay. Um, no, I don't know anything about them. Okay. That's what okay. I, know. I just okay. know that they signed Terrence Crawford and uh and and Adrian Broner. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. That's it. Okay. Cause I them, so I can't. You know, I don't, I don't know anything else about that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We got another question for you from the chat. They say, can we get Jamal versus Jana back <laughs> or Triple G to unify? Hey, I'm not the manager. I'm not the promoter. I'm all of the trainer. They mm-hmm. tell me who. And I get to working on who it is and put mm-hmm. a game plan to it. But mm-hmm. it's not up to me for any of these guys fight because i'm just a trainer right right i i I explain that to a lot of people you know the trainer slash coach you know they don't do the deals they don't get into the you know the politics of boxing (laughs) they just make sure the fighter is ready when it's time for fight night that's it you know huh that's my job yeah and of course you know uh, um uh uh your job is to make sure they're ready on fight night and ready to go. And Absolutely. now, right. Now, it is some good fighters out there. Janet Beck, uh, he fought the weekend. And I try to tell a lot of people. A lot of people say, well, he's been exposed. Uh, um, he didn't look himself. Um, he went the distance with a guy named Bentley. Well, I think that made him a better fighter, in my opinion. You know, because sometimes fighters have off days and sometimes, you know, you, you know, you fight better. You might want to do something that you couldn't do with that guy. So you had to make adjustments, you know, right. and you no. Know, and that's that's the rain guy you come in. You know, the, the thing about it is, you know, fighters can't look great every fight. You mm-hmm. know, sometimes a guy might bring a style that gives you trouble. You know, uh-huh. you know, sometimes you could just have an off night, you know. Right. And, that's that's boxing, man. That's that's the world of boxing. You can't look good every fight. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's what it is. You know, you want to look good when it counts. You want to win, of course. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you know, we're fighters, and right. and every fighter 
every fight you're not going to look great. Mm -hmm. so, so sometimes you go, you're going to have an off night. Same mm -hmm. with football player, basketball player, baseball player. Everybody mm -hmm. don't have a great night every night. That's right. That's right. Now, now Ron, how, how long you been into boxing? You know, I know you had some of the best fighters uh, uh, under your uh, uh, wing for you know a long time. I holy feel all those guys, and, and and every time I look up, I see you in the corner at, at a fight. You know, and I'm like, Ronnie, oh, he trained him. You know, I'm like, you know, damn, <laughs> right? So I'm like, man, I mean, you you in the train, you know, um, I know some some fighters might come over from another country and might choose a trainer to train with maybe for that one fight or two fights or maybe something like that. Have you dealt with that a lot? I mean, I've dealt with a lot of, a lot of different things in the sport, mm -hmm. but I've been a trainer for about 35 years. So wow. Okay. I've been, I've been in it a while. And yeah, I mean, you know, I get guys that, you know, that always come over sometimes. Hey, would you work with me for this fight? Yeah, you know, of course. Mm -hmm. You know. Okay. Now, so, would you, would you, are you choicey or who you choose, who, who you train or? Oh, absolutely. You have, okay. Absolutely. Okay. You know, I, turn, I turned out a lot of fighters. I don't train every fighter that come, you know, I don't train every fighter that comes up and say, hey, would you be my trainer? Okay. Now, you know, especially at, at this point in my career, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm sticking with guys that I feel have an opportunity to to do really good in the sport. So, you know, so I stick with that. And, sure. you know, and I have some young fighters that, that I'm working with right now that mm -hmm. I just love working with them. And, mm -hmm. you know, as long as I'm having fun, I'm going to keep doing this. But when, when the fun stops, then that's when I'm going to call it a day. Wow. Okay. Man, that's a long time. And But like you say, if you're having fun, you're teaching, you got good talent, you got good guys, and, you know, you have some fighters that come from not great neighborhoods, and, and, and boxing sometimes, you know, is a way out and pretty much save their life. You know, yeah. some of them. You know, I don't know um, the backgrounds of all the older fighters. You know, I know they didn't fight as for as much money as today. I do know that. Um, but, you know, boxing, you know, we got to get back to how it used to be. I do know that also. Yeah. And, and, of course, we had a uh, full bear era now. Yeah. And, and, and um, so it's kind of harder now to get undisputed. Yeah. You know, it's you know. Yeah. 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 You know, because it's a it's a full bill era and, and and it's a lot of good fighters at 135, 140, and uh 147. Yeah. You know. You absolutely, know, so, absolutely. Yeah. You know, so, boxing has really changed because mm -hmm. you know, people people say to me all the time, Well, man, you know, Ali, Frazier, Foreman. You know, I mean, all of those guys, they fought each other. They did this, they did, you know, mm -hmm. but they don't have, they don't understand. It was only two belts back then. Right. WBA, WBC. Right. That was it. And it wasn't but like a handful of promoters, Don King and Top Rank. So if you was with either one of those, you got seen on television all the time. Right. And all of the top guys was either with either one of those guys. You wow. Know? So, but yeah. now, look at it, what you got now, you know, besides HBO being out of it, but you had yeah. HBO, you got Showtime, you got Fox, you got Fox Sports 1, you got ESPN, yeah. you know, you have The Zone, you got Trilla, you know, and right. you got all these other different media, out, I mean, all these other different outlets now that's coming into the sport, you yeah. know, you know, you got some that people don't even know of. UFC fight pass. I mean, right. yeah, there's so many different television things and so mm -hmm. many different promoters out there. It's hard for the best to fight the best. And people don't seem to be to understand that you can't just say, I want to fight that guy. And it happens because it don't. Because mm -hmm. a lot of guys have contracts with television. Or a lot of promoters well, say, have yeah. contracts with, promo with, the, with the television. So... Right. You know, and the television ain't gonna let you out to go make somebody else fight 
bigger than what you could do over there at their right. network. And this is why these fights are not happening right now because because of that. Oh, promotion, yeah. Yeah, you know, and it's hard. That's why I always say, what is wrong with <clears throat> PBC fighter fighting top rank? Split the, um, the um, rights to the television. Y'all both show it or whatever. And just split it, you know, not well, middle, but That's a problem. Right. That's a problem when you do split TV because when you split it and if the television, if it if the pay-per-view don't do, if it don't do well, mm-hmm. you know, they lose their millions of dollars. You know, nobody's in this sport to lose millions of dollars. Wow. No television wants to do that. You know, case in point, mm-hmm. you know, when, when Lennox Lewis fought Mike Tyson, they did great pay-per-view numbers. Mm-hmm. You know, HBO and Showtime made money as well as the fighters made money. But, Mm -hmm. you know, but those two guys were really popular and people bought it. So, Mm -hmm. you know, so so that's the case. That's the difference in it. Mm -hmm. If you got, you know, like two guys fighting and you're doing a split pay-per-view and it don't do well, then everybody loses money. You know, the television not in the business to lose money. They want to make money just as well as the fighters want to make money. And, Mm. you know, and you can't guarantee a lot of these purses because you don't know what's what's going to happen. Case in point, this is the reason Crawford and Spence, you know, has has a lot to do with that because, you know, because of the guarantee. You can't hide your guarantee. When when you did pay-per-view, that was in the toilet. Right, right. Because Terrence wasn't very good at <clears throat> selling uh, pay per views. No, and Earl Spence was, you know. So, yeah. right. So how yeah. can you guarantee him a certain amount of money, and you know, and and, and your numbers is in a toilet? Exactly. You know, and you know when you when you under a, a promoter, you're not you don't have you don't see those things. But now that he's a free agent. Now he's starting to see how it works. Probably I don't know. I'm not. His, I'm not his head, but um, that's what I think. You know, he's starting to see now, or maybe he just <laughs> I don't want to fight him. I don't know. <laughs> but but we love. We would love to see that Benavides and Morel fight. I know a lot of people do. And uh, Triple G, I think he's um, pretty much older now, and I think uh, he's not the same Triple G as he was. I'm, I'm looking at the chat, but Triple G is not Triple G anymore. We saw that in the last fight with Canelo. But um, Menavis and Morel, that would be a good fight, I think, to get made. You know, um, <clears throat> so I don't know who – Morel is with PBC, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, that would be an easy fight to be made. So, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so that's an easy fight to be made. So, yeah. But – um. But yeah, Ronnie. I, I mean, I appreciate your time, man. You know, I know you're busy. Absolutely. You know, you all like I said, you always answer my texts, and good luck to you. Is Kid Austin? Is he um, fighting soon? You think? Uh, uh, he got anything set up? I talked to him and his father today. Uh, mm-hmm. They're looking sometime in January, so you okay. know, the Golden Boy Show. So, you know, okay. so within the next couple of weeks or so, we should find out for sure. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay, man. That's okay. That that's good, man. We have a lot of good fights in twenty twenty three. You know, oh, I see yeah, that. Yeah I see, yeah, I see that now. So, okay, Ronnie. Uh, uh, I'm not gonna hold you uh, long. I know you had a long day today. Uh, uh, so I appreciate you coming in, and, and and thanks a lot. Um, um, for coming in today and uh, and and showing some love to me in the channel, and I hope uh, um uh, the young man uh, at Adios is doing great. And tell Jamal I said hello if you see him, and and, and hope good luck to you in the future. All right, and appreciate I appreciate it. All Thank right? you. All right. Thank All you. Right. All right. Have Thank a good one. You. Okay, you too. All right. All right. That was Ronnie Shields. Yes, sir. So Floyd Schofield will be fighting. Uh, he's saying uh, in the next month or so. I mean, well, January. You know, next year rather. You know, but uh, um, that was great of Ronnie to come in. He always. You know, show love to the channel, and I appreciate him coming in. Now, uh, what he said about, first of all, Jamal, all right? I think Jamal is going through something right now, okay? I don't, I, I'm not 
I didn't want to push, but he's not fighting right now. He's, he's, like Ronnie said, he's not fighting. Okay. So something must be there. Okay. Now, he spoke on Deontay Wilder. Wow. Now, we know how 78 LWC feels about Wilder. And he believes that, you know, he, he think Mark Brillen did the right thing. Okay. Well, I'll leave that up to you all to decide. Did he do the right thing or didn't he? But he believed, you know, Mark Brillen did the right thing. No live to fight another day. Now, also, the young man that's in a coma right now, David Morrell went to try to go see him. And, uh, uh, um, okay, Z said I do too, OG. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you know, you know, but I think so. But, you know, I think Wilder had a rule or something. Uh, uh, um, you know, don't th stop the fight no matter what. I think that well, I don't know how to answer me. But anyway, uh, but uh, um, but Dave Morrell tried to go to the hospital to see this young man. You know, I'm glad to, to hear that, you know. You know, I wasn't mad about him stopping the fight. No, 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 I wasn't no, I wasn't mad either, you know, because like Ronnie said, the brain is not meant to get hit, and the brain rattles when you get hit right here and flush. You know, your brain rattled. Y'all know that by my niece. You know, for my early subscribers, y'all know what happened to my niece, you know, and everything. So, and, and, and the brain is not to be shook or nothing like that, you know. So, but, um, but David Morrell, he's ready. Uh, he believes that he's ready. He believes that he's ready to have all that smoke. And, and, you know, Ronnie believes that David Morrell wants that smoke, and he's not going to wait on Canelo. Now, Canelo, now, Ronnie said he said he'd be back in uh, March. I thought he'd be back in August, but they say after the surgery, he'd be back in uh, March. So he said he's not going to be uh, uh, um, waiting on Canelo. And he also said, and, of course, you can run this back if you don't, don't want to watch it, you know. He also said that it's not fair that Canelo get to fucking run up and down weight classes. <laughs> because it's not fair because he makes the money. And he it's not fair that he get to do what the fuck he want to do. And he's right. And Jake Paul is not helping boxing. It's hurting boxing. So right also got a problem with Floyd. Floyd making a mockery out of boxing after his boxing. Hello. Yeah, hello. He's making a mockery out of boxing after this boxing. Because he's making millions of dollars. He's fighting. His fighter's not fighting, but his ass fighting. Like I told y'all earlier this morning. <laughs> That's funny, ain't it? That's why I said, how you like me now? Because you got uh, uh, Richardson. Hitch uh, Richard Hitchison. Hitchens. He never fought. He sat on the bench at Floyd Mayweather Promotions. He go over to the zone. He fighting now. He just got over there, what, three months ago, four months ago? So, yes, it's not helping boxing. It's hurting boxing. You two is fighting. Floyd out there fucking fighting a YouTuber, you know. That's all he went, you know, it's all about the money thing. It's all about the money thing. And, of course, you have to understand, when Ron is old school, and like you said, he trained Ann Wolf, also Holyfield, uh, Tyson, all them guys. And this only had two belts at that time. So that's why both all these guys were fighting each other. But not today. In today's uh, boxing world, it, it, it's, for, uh, 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 um, it's a four-belt era. It's a four-belt era. It's hard to do. And they don't fight over cross-promotions. And that's the problem. That's the problem why a lot of fights not getting made. You know. So, I mean, uh, 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 yeah, yeah, Z, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I think, you know, Bill made the right move. Now, I don't know about the war and all that stuff, you know, anything like that. No, you know, so I don't know about that, you know, but, you know, it is what it is. You know, um, I do know, I remember Bar Mark Bill when he was an amateur. I do know that he was very, I mean, you talking about a jab, that man got a jab. That man was a jab uh, uh, coming up in the amateurs and as a young pro. 
you know uh, um so i mean he was he was he was the man at that time you know so but you know ronnie you know he explained a lot of things about dave morrell being ready to fight uh dave Menavis. you know um, i don't know if you can tell or not but you know jose and they uh, uh um ronnie they don't see eye to eye sometimes most of the times because that's why you know when i mention the name you know but anyway but still and all uh what's up dragon fang what's going on all right what's going on nikki j what's going on bastiana i think i saw y'all up in here you y'all must forgot what's happening with y'all all right so i wanted to the reason why i wanted to talk to ronnie is because i want to know what david morrell mindset is that and I think he's about the same uh, on what I was saying. Because if this guy passed away, how would that affect David Morrell? Now, as Ronnie says, if that guy fine, get up out the hospital and go to his family, then he's going to be fine. He's going to be okay as far as boxing and mentally too. But what if this guy passed and that affects you in your boxing skills, you know. You know, so yes, sir. Yeah, that's right. Now, don't he want that smoke? And now it sounds like Ronnie, like, hey, give it to him, because I know Ronnie told me that he's not ready. He don't think he's ready right now. You know, let it, you know, marinate a little bit more, but. Of course, Ronnie think he's ready now. So he want that smoke. And like Ronnie said, if he's too big for 168, then he's going to 175. He's not going to sit around like everybody else and wait on Canelo Alvarez to choose them. Like Jamal was doing. Like Jamal was doing. So, so you know, so there you go. I mean, he answered the question because, you know, I would like to see David still be that same david mindset david what's up young bill uh, i appreciate you man you know so and, and i saw that with money brown and um travion last night you know and also he talked about crawford he talked about crawford and spence and you know i i, I see what his facial features was when i said well now Terrence starting to learn the business of boxing and he looked like yeah, all right, right, right. Because he know, you know, he pretty much don't want to fight him. Pretty much full of shit. All right, you know. Of course, he ain't gonna say that, but, but that's what he alluded to. You know, come on. I mean, that's what that's what it is. You know. So, but uh, um, like you say, Ronnie old school, and he believed that boxing should be boxing, and it should be a mockery. It should be made a mockery of just for the money. You know. And uh, I didn't get a chance to ask him about Al Hame, I forgot. But anyway, but um, so, but now, you know, I see David Morrell uh, 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 moving up, pretty much take a couple more fights. He want to stay busy. He want to smoke. He don't even have 10 fights yet, you know, but, you know, uh, like Ronnie said, he's only working with 10 fighters now. He's been doing this for 35 years. So that's a long time. That's a very long time. So, so he want that smoke. Hell, God damn it. You know, give it to him. That's what I say. You know. So, yes, sir. So, so I mean, you know, it is what it is. Uh, 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 you know, Bill said, uh, okay, you had tremendous questions. Oh, okay, I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, 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 Ronnie, good guy. You know, good guy. You know, never turn me down when I call him. He always answer me or text me back. You know, he always, you know. And um, so he, his wife's going to show my daughter around down there in Houston. So uh, Dave Morrell is having a hard time making 168. That's the truth. Yeah. That way he said, if he can't make the weight, he's going to jump up to 175. No hesitation. He's not going to sit there and wait uh, 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 Bill on, on, on Canelo Everest. You know, he's not going to do like the rest of these guys, you know, and wait on him. Now, I, I, I'm going to find out what's going on with Jamal. You know, now I kind of see, you know, because he don't have no fights lined up. And, you know, he's still a champion, still hold his belt at 168. But 
he needs to fight somebody. And is he ready? Is he in the gym? What is he doing? So, right. Yeah, yeah by shout out to the Canelo sweepstakes. Yeah, you know, but I don't think Canelo's going to be the same without that with that surgery, hand surgery. Uh, um, and he's not going to rematch B Bivol. I don't think so, uh, Bashan. You know, now they say he wants to, but, you know, of course not. David Benavides and Callum Plant, that fight has been ordered. The winner of that fight is the mandatory to Canelo Alvarez. That fight won't happen, all right? Now, Jose Benavides Sr. came out yesterday and said he won't fight us. And, of course, David Benavides told you all last week he's full of shit. He don't fight no Mexicans, right? But his whole career was what? Fighting Mexicans. So, you know, it is what it is. But, of course, you heard Ronnie say, just because you got money, that means you can run up and down fucking weight class. you like, you got goddamn skates on, right? Running and dodging, using franchise belt and all the other shit just to get the fuck out of the way from guys that can move and can whoop your ass. And then next year, you know, this is the Mission Andretti problem. This is Jamal Charlo problem. But this ain't going to be Dave Morrell problem. Because Dave Morrell ain't going to stand there and sit there and wait on a motherfucker. Not no short guy. Uh-uh. You know, not no short guy that got to get close to you to punch you. When he got that long stick out there, they keep your ass at bay. And then you're not going to fight Bill. Because how you going to beat Bill? You can't beat him. Bill can beat you 10 times out of 10. What you going to do different? You can't do nothing different. No, unless you, you no know, miraculously pick up your damn feet. That ain't going to help. <laughs> Shit, it's not going to help. Look at Zerto. He was the baddest motherfucker around until he met who? Bill, right? Because he, you know, not a hype job, but when you put some fighters in there and you keep putting them in there with guys that's under the level, then they're going to get used to that. Then when they fight a real fighter, because that's how Oscar did Canelo, then when you fight a real fighter, then you're going to be like, oh, oh, shit, oh, my God. You know, so, and that what happened with Zerto. So, you know, it is what it is, you know. But, yeah, Asia, I will find out what's going on with Jamal. You know, I will make my business and find out. You know, of course, behind closed doors, I'm about to find out, you know. So, but he's not fighting right now. Don't know why. And uh, Ronnie didn't want to get into it. I see. So I didn't push. So he just said he's not he's not fighting right now. So, but I don't know how long he's going to hold that belt without fighting. Because you got to uh, fight a mandatory sooner or later. But then again, you can go. You know, longer than that without fighting mandatory. So, what's up, Chris? The problem, what's going on? All right, salute to you. The Canelo did an interview yesterday and said he's fighting Bilbo for uh, uh, single to my. Okay. Okay, is he? Okay. Okay, then. Is that the case, then? All right, then. All right, then. Okay, good for Canelo. Man, if that happens, man, then I, I, I duly stand corrected if that happens which I don't think it will, but if he does, all right, you know, good for Canelo then. You no, know, so, but but then again, you know, the sports has changed, and like I said, you know, um, Kid Austin, you know, he's coming along good, you know, and the big heavyweight guy, I can't say his name again, Havoc, Bevic, whatever, you know, but um, so, well, we'll see. You know, we'll see what happens. Canelo crazy if he fights Bill. Yeah, yeah, I, I, look, Canelo want to fight him on Cinco de Mayo, that's fine. But I don't see anything he can do differently to beat Bibble. I mean, he tried to do that arm shit, you know, punch him on the arm so he couldn't use the jab. Bibble was ready for that. He was ready for everything. It was nothing that he wasn't prepared for. And that fight and Zero fight. Matter of fact, I'm looking at him as being fighter of the year. You know, I would give him fighter of the year. You know, that's how I look at it. I would get him fight over the year. You know, so you know, I mean, it, it, it was a it was a great uh, interview. Uh, I think it was. You know, um, and this is Ronnie uh, second time being here. What's up, Zena three sixty? What's going on with you? 
I know, I know, I know. I'm not a prime time guy. I just came on here to do this interview. That's all. <laughs> I'm, I'm on here to do this interview. I'm a morning guy. But uh, but yeah, you know. So so um, the, the like I said, the reason why I wanted to do the interview is just to see what David Morrell and uh, Ronnie was at with this guy because this guy is not doing so good. Uh, um, and, and like Ronnie said, he walked out. Uh, 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 and shake your hands, you know. And see, this is what happens in sport of boxing. You know, when you get hit a certain way, anything can happen. Anything can happen in boxing, you know. That's why I keep saying that you can't play this shit if you ain't trained right. And this is what I say about these YouTubers and shit. But Floyd, he's in there playing with the guy, you know, up there in the corner doing this with the other, you know. I'm just, man, just a mockery, right? Well, Floyd don't care because he's making money. He's making money. He's fighting more than his own fighters fighting. Ain't that a bitch? And poor Javante Davis. Poor Javante Davis. And that's what I say. Poor Javante Davis. Because Javante Davis is a good fighter, uh, 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 but don't have the opportunities. That's the problem. You know. So. But, you know, it is what it is. You know. But I appreciate everybody coming in. Uh, for the interview that was a great interview you know i think and uh i hope the young man go back home to his family and you know um and hopefully get better but he won't fight again no doubt about it you know uh, ronnie's right he won't never fight again because you know what happened you know so and ronnie had some issues with that fight too i see tony weeks you know he said he missed it the commission missed it. He said even the doctors were sitting ringside. Missed it. When I called that fight, I said that man knows we're broke. But, of course, a lot of people fight with broken hands and broken nose. But he kept on bleeding. They had a corner full of bloody towels. His nose wouldn't stop bleeding. So it's something that ain't right. Man, I didn't see the blanket, but Ryan said he was blinking, but I didn't see any blanket. But it's not their job to stop the fight. Because he's still in there trying to hit David Durrell, uh, Morrell. So Morrell got to, you know, turn around and hit him back. Shit. I mean, it is a sport. And at least he went up to the hospital, but they wouldn't let him in because he wasn't family. But still, you know, uh, but, you know, sometimes things happen in boxing. You know, and you know, looking at Donna Stevenson, Patrick Day. I mean, these guys, you know, they didn't expect to be, you know, in the position they're in now, you know. So, and that's why we always got to be careful of what we say and put out, you know, in, in boxing, you know, because, you know, some people just looking for clicks and shit like that, and people lying and making up shit, you know, and just shoot it straight, you know. You know what I mean? Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, yeah, Ron. Yeah, he's a stand-up guy, man. Yeah, 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 Billy. He's a stand-up guy, man. Uh, uh, I always appreciate him, you know. And like I say, he's old school, you know. And, uh, you know, like you say, you know, everybody fought each other back then. But now things have changed, you know. Um, cross promotion, a lot of promoters, you know. Just things have changed, you know, pay-per-views. And, and, and now maybe... Maybe you Crawford fans will listen now. As Ronnie said, Crawford don't sell. So how you expect to get a guarantee and we don't even know how he's going to do? Because your history says your shit don't sell. So, now, do any else, anybody else believe me? <laughs> Shit. Uh, uh, is the network still messing with his numbers? Shit. Your own fans ain't buying your shit. Really? Come on. But, but Ronnie's not in that deal. You know. You know, so. Yeah. Now, 
uh, 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 then it said, uh, wrong because Brilla agreed to while the wishes and not stopping the fight, no matter what, and only let the ref stop it. And Brilla wasn't even the one that taught protection, only jab work. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Brilla was the head coach, though, right? JD wasn't a head trainer. JD was assistant trainer, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, Brilla did the pass, didn't he? Well, I don't know. You know, you know, I don't know. That whole camp changed, kind of, except for JD's. I think he's still there, but I don't know. That been so. That been a while back, so I don't know. You know, but um, but I think he did save his life, though. It could anything could have happened when he laid down that night to that next week. Anything could happen. You know. And, um, you know, hey, I ain't mad at him. I'm like, Nicky J, I ain't mad at him, you know, for stopping the fight, you know. But it is what it is. So, but, uh, yeah, you know, no, a brilliant was. A brilliant was not the head coach. Okay, who's the head coach? J.D. was the head coach? Because they had, what, J.D. and brilliant, but brilliant was doing, yeah, he was that trainer. Because uh, when you fought Bermain Severn, he's the only one who gave instructions. I know I, I'm just saying because I was looking at what he was saying. That's why I was saying that. Uh, but let me see. Most of the fights, yeah. Most of the fights, he was the only one in there. And JB was holding the you know, the bucket on the outside. But, you know, only one allowed in there at the time anyway. So I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. But it's not important now. Uh, Mark Billing, you know. Uh, I don't know what he's doing now, but he probably trained it. I don't know. Yeah. So, but who decision wasn't there? You know, that's, I, I don't know who decision wasn't. You know, so, but, but he fired Mark Brillman. So, if you're not the head trainer, you can't stop the fight, right? If I'm not mistaken. You know, only head trainer and the commission and the referee can stop the fight. Or the doctor. So, so I don't know what happened with that shit. You know, I don't know what happened with that thing. You'd be best to add 78, you know, because I don't know. I really don't know what happened with that deal. You know, I just know he got mad at him for stopping the fight. That's all I know. You know, what's up, Sheena? How you doing, my sister? All right. I know, I know, I, this ain't my time. You seem to come on, but hey, I just did an you know, interview with Ronnie Shields and, you know, I just wanted to see where Dave Morrell was at and the young man was at. And, and still, I didn't get enough information. You know, young man still in a hospital. You know, I know that. You know, but, you know, I want to know, is he looking bad, looking good, or what? You know? Uh, uh, Boss Hunter said, yeah, he should be grateful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because Wilder was getting beat up bad. Matter of fact, he still got that dent in his head. And what I hear, he still got that dent in his head, you know. And, and his equilibrium is thrown off still. But I don't think it happened that fight, but um, but it is what it is, you know. But I don't know. I, I don't know who stopped the fight. You know, it's really not important no more. Um, uh, but he fired Mark Brillen. You know, I'm quite sure Mark Bullen, you know, uh, got a job somewhere else as a trainer because he was an Olympian. And, um, you know, he was a great, great fighter, great, great uh, uh, amateur, you know, so, and a great pro, you know, so I don't know what the uh, deal was. What's up, Tim? What's going on with you, brother? So, but, um, you know, I, I thank everybody for coming in today. Uh, uh, I appreciate you all coming and check out the uh, interview with Ronnie Shields. Uh, uh, a great fighter and a great person to talk with, you know. And um, and I thank everybody. I am KQKC. Did anybody got any questions? Any concerns? Any great thoughts that you want to tell me? All right? <laughs> any great news? Any news? Anything going on? Huh? <laughs> What's up, Eric O? What's up, King Style Productions? What's going on, baby? Yes, sir. I'm working on one more interview. One more I'm working on for this week. One more interview. And 
it's kind of hard one, but I'm trying to get get it now. So, and I'll let you all know uh, tomorrow who it is. I I have to see tonight. What time is it? Okay, yeah, he's on Eastern time. So, all right. So I'm trying to get this interview, and this is a good one here, a fighter, you know. So, uh, but um, with the um, uh, 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 what's up, Jafar? Uh, your, your, I, man, you know what? I had your name right one time, and now I forgot. I can't pronounce. I'm not good with name. Uh, 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 Jafari uh, Caesar. What's, he said, "OG, can you interview Carissa Shields?" Yeah, I, you know what? Uh, we have uh, Ken, and um, he be in the chat every day. Him and Carissa Shields knows each other. You know, they're from the same hometown. And I have an autographed picture here of Carissa Shields, uh, and she got one for Seven Eight Sports. <laughs> I still got it. <laughs> I told him about it, but I still got it. I ain't sent it to him. I still got it. <laughs> Man, I still got it. And that was a year ago. <laughs> he got it for me, Ken. Right? So, but I, I sent it to him when I get a chance. <laughs> I still got it, though. But, yeah, I can do that and, and see what she said. But she doesn't do a lot of interviews with uh, um, YouTube, you know, uh, um, her and Champ side, they pretty good. Uh, 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 um, uh, they know each other pretty good, and she never was on his show, so don't know why. But she doesn't do, but I think mandatory interviews. So I find out. But you know, um, but you know, hey, look, one sixty eight, one seventy five. It's starting to be a big deal now. Normally, you stop one forty seven, then. In the middle, this is how it used to be. We get to 147, Sugar Ray Leonard. Uh, uh, um, then, then as you know, we all jumped up to heavyweight. In between 75 and 68 things and 154, nobody didn't care about that back then. You know, they didn't. You know, we had called satellite TV at that time. And we always cared about, you know, the welterweight division. It was called the glamour division, you know. And then going up straight up to heavyweight because everybody liked the Hearns and uh, um, the Ali's and the uh, 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 Foreman's and things like that. So, but, you know, it is what it is. So, but, hey, but I know some other shows coming on uh, tonight. I know uh, you all definitely will be entertained. And KQKC, you know, I'm 11 a.m. guy, you know, but. Uh, um, but I had to do the interview at, at night, of course, like as like you said, you know, they rotate in and out every three hours. You have a different fighter coming in. Uh, um, uh, no, did I tell y'all that? Yeah, I told y'all that. Yeah, he has a uh, fighter coming in every three hours, so that's why he couldn't do the interview at night. He had to do it at night, so so so, of course, you know, you got to do it when they wanted to do it, you know, so. And some been hit and miss, like uh, Nikki J saying one time, you know, just keep trying, and you know, and that's what I do, and I do it for you all, you know, so you all can, you know, you know, hear somebody else beside me talk every day, you know, and plus it's always interesting to hear from their mouth themselves how they feel about certain things. So, and you heard how you felt about that fight. That fight should have stopped in the eighth round. That fight should have been stopped. He wanted to jump up and tell Tony Weeks, stop the fight. But, of course, you can't do that because you're on the other side. Other, You know, you're in the corner. And I did not know his corner told him that you're about to be champion. Why the hell would they tell this man that? And this is really, no, that really bites my ass. Why would you tell this man that you're about to be champion and you lost every damn round? You know, you know, maybe one pull out my Roger Mayweather card and shit and say, damn, you don't know shit about boxing then. You know? I mean, why would they tell that man that? And he get his ass whooped and bleeding every minute of every round. You know, out the nose. And Ronnie said he was swallowing blood. You are swallowing blood. Are you kidding me? You know? Man, that 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 that, that would have really—I was like surprised. I never, I didn't, I haven't heard that. 
that in the corner they was telling him that you're winning. You can be champion. You know, man, you know, gassing dude up for nothing. Yes, that's what it was, gassing him up. Trying to make him go that extra mile. For what? So they can call the uh, morale name off? And you disappointed? You know, oh, come on. But on his defense, I will say this, like Ronnie said, you know, why maybe he was in a fight and he came from behind the last round or two or something like that. Who knows? You know, but that fight, you got to know that he was losing. That fight, you got to know something was wrong. That fight, that blood won't stop coming out his nose. So it won't stop bleeding. Now, I always thought when you get your nose broke, only a little blood comes out, which is true in sometimes, but it was more there than just a broken nose. So, 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 and I just can't believe the doctors. You know, I don't know if the doctors are hired on a part time basis or uh, what, trying to make some extra money for the kids to go to college. I don't know. But, why they didn't catch that shit, I don't know. Well, then again, you know, the doctors ain't mind readers, so. But that's why I told my doctor, you know, look, when you can put that camera on my ass, make sure my ass is asleep because I don't feel like I'm being violated. <laughs> well, I had that colonoscopy. God damn it. I'm serious. I don't want to be feeling like I'm violated. And you know she a woman doctor still, you know. <laughs> But anyway, hey, I appreciate everybody coming in here today. All right, thanks a lot. All right, it means a lot to me that y'all came in. Thank you all uh, for the support. And now uh, it is what it is. All right. So, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, shit, yeah. I have I have it on the thirtieth this month, the last last day of the month. So you know I have to have one. You know, so because cancer around my family. So, but you know, like I said, you know, make sure my ass is sleep. Cause I don't feel like I'm being violated, so I won't. You know, before you stick that camera up my ass, all right. Make sure my ass is snoring or some shit, all right. Cause I don't want to be feeling that shit, right? <laughs> I'm serious, shit. And I'm glad it's not a man doctor. I'll be like, man, I feel so feminine right now. <laughs> I feel so feminine right now. God damn it, right? <laughs> but anyway, that's all I got for y'all. And I will see y'all in the AM, all right? Thank y'all for coming in, all right? I appreciate everybody. And like I say, you know, I uh, hope hope the questions was answered uh, about the Morel fight and what Morel's going to do and the Jamal, you know, which he's not fighting right now. He took the day, you know, he took some time off, I guess, you know. Yeah. You know, so, but, you know, it is what it is. What you say, Bossy? <laughs> she ought to yell out, cheek, right? <laughs> Before you fall asleep. <laughs> she better not say that shit. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> That's why I specifically asked for a woman doctor a long time ago. I did, because I knew some shit like this going to happen. You know, some nasty shit, right? You know, in my mind, it's not nasty it's medical shit, but, you know, you don't want a man say, oh, you know, okay, well, this is what we're going to do, right? We're going to put this, you know, cheek this right in your anus, right? We'll go right up in there, right? <laughs> see, we get a chance to see everything's up in there. But you got to drink this shit first, right? That's nasty shit. Because she called me today and said, that I pick up my medicine? I said, this early? She said, yeah. You know, you can go pick it up. So I went to the pharmacy and picked it up. And I got to drink all that shit. And I can't eat nothing. And, you know, I like to eat. <laughs> so I can't drink nothing. Nothing. So, and this is my, I'm 55. This is my first time having one. I should have been had one. Because uh, uh, prostate running my father, uh, uh, he got prostate cancer. and But he's in remission. So, uh, but I should have been had one at 50. You know, but kept putting it off. So, damn OG, she broke out. Uh, the uh, the base on your ass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man, no, nah, uh, man, shit, no, nah, man, you have a man voice, man, shit. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah y'all in a relationship. Oh, oh, man, get the fuck out of here. No, we ain't in no relationship. <laughs> no, no, no. Because she, she's a Muslim. You know, so she's she's not a Muslim like I am. You know, she she she's deep and she's born into a, 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 a Muslim. You know, so anyway, yeah, but she she's she's a cool doctor though. She's a cool doctor though. So she's married. So, but that don't mean the damn thing, shit. <laughs> I will be up there, you know, turn over and then wake up and shit. And man, but hey, at least I won't be woke. All right, you know, take advantage of me and shit. Uh, take advantage of me while I'm sleep. That's right. Take advantage of me while I'm sleep. <laughs> shit, man. But hey, hey, hey. Look, I need to find out though because it's better late than never. You know. And uh, that's why I'm glad my father found out uh, uh, about getting random tests. Now he had to go every five years. So it used to be every two years. Now it's every five years. So he's doing pretty good, too. So with that, that's it. I am KQKC Boxing Network. Shout out to the almighty LDBC. Thank everyone for coming in today. I appreciate you, and I will see you in the AMKQKC. We'll go prime time one more time this week, hopefully, hopefully, all right? So I'll make a couple calls when I get off and, and, and see what I can get lined up, all right? So, but we're going to have a big 2023 year. I guarantee you that. We're going to have a big 2023 year, okay? So I will tell you that. So it's more to come, uh, 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 more uh, interviews, uh, more fights. You know, of course, I call every fight. So if the fight is on, I'm gonna call that fight. So guarantee you that. And with that, thanks to everybody for your support. Thank everybody for your super chats. All right, I appreciate everybody. And um, I don't even know who's on. So you know, find another LWC channel to go to, or any channel you want to go to. All right. And with that, I'm out of here. Peace and love to everybody. Everybody have a great day. And I will see you to a great evening. And I will see you all in the AM. And with that, take care. What you laughing your ass off about, Rick? All right? See, I should never tell y'all ass and shit. <laughs> uh-huh. Thank you. She going to put the banana in the tailpipe. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. But is it good to be violated by a woman than a man? Don't you think so? Don't you think so? Huh? <laughs> now y'all got me thinking about this shit. All right, I'm getting out of here. All right. <laughs> I'm out of here, y'all. Peace. <laughs>